Hey there, fellows. Right, so today's that time again. We've sort of reached the point when we gotta continue doing all sorts of interesting experiments. Car-related, of course. As for what prompted us... Well, the thing is that the roads where we're located really aren't the best. In some spots, the potholes are just... They are trying to fix everything. There are just so many of them around that it's really not an issue that you can solve in just a matter of days. Yeah, that ain't happening. So a few days ago I witnessed how this poor guy... He hit a pothole with both of his left wheels, blowing out two tires in the process. The pothole itself wasn't really that huge, but the sharp edges led to disaster. Anyway, we're looking to explore the topic of... What exactly leads to these sorts of consequences. Then again, that is pretty obvious. It's all in the sharp edges. Still, we'd like to see how this works. We'll start by checking how a tire behaves on low pressure, imitating an air leak and loss of pressure. As I see it, that increases your chances of blowing your tire out. But it very well might be the opposite, with high pressure making that sort of outcome more likely. Anyway, so right here we have a wheel. This was the closest one that was within my reach. Now, the point is that we'll be imitating a small curb. You know, something along those lines. So we've got a few slabs, which we'll be placing on top of each other. We'll be stacking them about 100 millimeters high, or maybe a bit more. We secure them. After that, I get up to speed. And test the wheel with low tire pressure, excessive pressure, and everything in between those two extremes. That'll help us determine whether the tire holds up or blows out at any given pressure. Figure out at what point does an overinflated tire explode? Let's go find out, shall we? Let's do this. 220 psi. Can the tire keep it together? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Right, fellas, here's what we're looking at. We've taken two of these plates, which are about 80 to 90 mil thick, I'd say closer to 90, imitating a pothole in the pavement. Let's kick this off with a slightly deflated tire. While this car was parked outside, it did lose a bit of air. I'll go ahead and measure exactly how much pressure is left in there. Somewhere around 10 psi. Okay, now we check to see whether this flat tire will fare against these plates. The size of this tire is 155 slash 70 R13, so it's got a pretty fat profile. In theory, punching through a 70% profile tire all the way to the rim shouldn't be that simple. This one is lacking pressure, so it very well might happen. Right, guys, let's get this party started. It appears that the brakes only work on that very same wheel. <laughs> that was a pretty rough impact. I'm gonna try that one more time. That felt like a serious hit. As you can see, everything is perfectly fine at 10 psi. That said, take a look at how it caved in while I'm standing on this hump. That's how low the pressure is. Still though, even as it sits, and I have to say it's actually pretty amazing, the rubber held its own. We checked the footage, which you've already seen by now, and we saw that the impact does actually reach the rim. Despite that, the rim still didn't slash the tire for whatever reason which is slightly disappointing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And now we begin gradually increasing the pressure and look on to see what happens. I say we bring it up to 36. Yeah, like normal pressure. Exactly. It was at 32, but the hot weather brought that up to 36. Yeah, yeah, stop running your mouth. Excellent.
So with the pressure of 34 psi, we saw that the rubber did fold considerably, but the impact didn't reach the rim. Now let me try about 57 to 62. We'll have a look at how much the tire collapses. Oh yeah, and one more thing. I've heard that you shouldn't go crazy when over-inflating tires, since that might result in an explosion. 57, nice. It is pretty hard. Alright, so check this out. Yeah, I'm looking very carefully. Oh wow, it's still caved in quite a bit. What do you know? Then again, if you compare it to the one in the back, well, that's no surprise. See that? It appears that the front wheel bounces up higher than the rear. Yeah, it apparently bounces off with more force on this sort of pressure. Let's go to 85 PSI. Here's what's up, fellas. When running 85 PSI, the suspension really it does take one hell of a beating. The struts, I mean, it's not just the struts that can take a shit. You're talking tie rod ends, ball joints, bushings, the lot. The links and everything else. It is really hard. We just did 85. Now let's try... 114. Let's do this. 114. Spot on. <laughs> oh man, that was rough! Okay, so on 114 PSI, the hit that the suspension takes it's as if you're running a solid wheel. It transfers such a brutal impact through the suspension that, yeah, it is very unpleasant. But the tire itself is very much in one piece. So yeah, it can handle 114 PSI, meaning we're going up to 142. Do we really have a choice? Let's do this. 142. Cyril, that's 142. 142? Yeah, I've also got 142. 142. Same. Awesome. So no difference between 114 and 142? It's not collapsing any further. You did pick up some speed there. Looks like it flies a good meter without touching the ground. So it's basically suspended in the air. Holy cow! Should we try 170? But how do we feed in that much pressure? Alright, so here's the deal. Currently we're running 142 psi in this here tire. Unfortunately, our air compressor won't go any higher than that. So we'll try using carbon dioxide. The pressure does exceed 142 by quite a bit. That's 170. A bit more. And then that carbon dioxide is going to warm up. Which might actually increase the pressure. Then again, I mean, whatever. This hose is completely covered in frost. Now that was frickin' gnarly. Really? It's still intact? Okay, so far even at 170 psi, the tire is feeling okay. That's good. Let's increase the pressure some more. You guys see how much pressure we've got? I don't even know how much that is. Look at you all flinching. Bunch of pussies. I'd say we're running about 200 psi at the moment. 200? How about 220? Whatever, let's call it 220. We doing this? It held up.
It blew right past. What are you guys so worried about? Why did you even place a stone under there anyway? I mean between the plates. To bring the impact height up a bit, man. Try it again. Right, fellas, here's the situation. As a matter of fact, on low pressure, moderate pressure, high pressure, super high pressure, and on ludicrous pressure, this here concrete assembly fell apart, despite it being reinforced and whatever. In the end, it crumbled to pieces. It's completely and utterly boned. Meanwhile, the tire is good. Now, this way. Then again, this should do the trick. Well, let's take a moment to say goodbye to that tire. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> Were you scared? <laughs> Not really. It nearly blew Anatoly away, though. <laughs> you okay over there? <laughs> that was one hell of a bang. <laughs> but I mean, that was a cheeky way to do it. No mercy whatsoever. Anatoly got hit. Damn it, it bit me! That tiny thing flying straight for the camera? It's not gonna make it. Right, fellows, we were able to destroy the tire after all, but that's a spike, which we just went and drove onto. Then again, anybody runs the risk of driving over a spike like this one on the road. There's always a ton of shit lying around on the pavement. Not to mention all of the potholes, bumps and whatever. Anything you can imagine. <laughs> that spike roughed everybody up. The camera guys and the rest of the crew. We all had a great time. Stay safe on the road, fellas. Make sure to be cautious and always keep track of your tire pressures, if you can. And always be aware of these sorts of things on the road, especially if it was just raining outside. You never know what's at the bottom of a puddle. Right, fellas, that's all I have for you. You saw it all for yourselves. Now you watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.